Andy in the attic here with a little video or a little rant, not quite sure yet, on training culture. The alphabet therapy scenes training culture. This is one of those things that is, is quite meta to the whole training scheme that I think a lot of people don't really think about too much. And it's the whole culture of what happens within the training course. So the alphabet therapy training course is everything from um, NLP, all the derivatives, to hypnotherapy and so forth, generally are a move away from the academic teaching style, which, to be honest, no bad thing. I'm not a big fan of the academic teaching style either, and so it, it makes sense to me. But in that move away, a number of things then emerge, one of which is it must be made fun, frivolous and entertaining. All very well and good so far. But what starts to emerge is a training culture where fun is the number one thing. And an awful lot of silliness then starts to creep in to the, the culture overall. Now, personally, um, I'm a therapist, I work as a therapist, I spend a lot of work, a lot of study and an awful lot of effort in developing both what I do, but also in learning the stuff that I do as well. It's not been easy. And it's a lot of hard work. The, the training culture in the alphabet therapy scene seems to move away from an attitude of hard work, and actually pushes more on the status. And so essentially, the courses increasingly take on grandiose names, in that you attend a particular course in a particular thing, and then you end up with a grandiose title, whether it's the, the mega super duper advanced international qualified internationally recognized life coach life coaching. Um, and so essentially, the, the scene itself takes on a, a, an air of self importance, despite the largely entertaining frivolous nature of a lot of the material that's taught. Other things within the culture you'll see um, at the end of a course, it might just be a one day course, it might just be a weekend course, where the content is relatively light in terms of the amount of effort brain juice that's required to get through the material. There's always the photograph at the end when everyone holds up their certificate, usually positioned in a group, and you've got the trainer in the center of the group and the photograph is taken. Look on, I was gonna say on my social media. If you were to look on my social media, if I still had it, you'd see me doing the same thing. And it seems to be this in really important aspect at the end of the course, to give this ratification that we've really achieved something here today. Um, and it creates this illusion of look at us, we're accomplished. And actually, all people have really done is just turn up for the weekend. There's no exam, there's no assessment, there's no not usually much of anything. It's just I spent the weekend here, drank some tea, made some friends, had a nice time, listened to some interesting material from a very entertaining presenter, at least we hope. And now we all get and it's almost like We'd, we've achieved a degree, we've done three years at university, really working hard and drinking a lot. No, but it's, it takes on this whole air of something that actually, the photographs become more important, the certificate becomes more important. The individual photograph, here's me and my celebrity trainer becomes more important than the actual skill set. And that the more of these images people can put on their social media, the more important and valuable as a human being, they're going to be. And this is one of the issues I think I have with coaches and therapists generally, the overriding sense of self importance that actually exceeds any work ethic and skill set that they might possess. Now, there's other stuff too. So you've got the course junkies. Now, at one level, the person who goes on regular training courses as a recreational event, I get it. For some people, they like to go fishing for the weekend. Other people like to go and attend a course where they can go and stay in a hotel, make lots of friends, have a nice evening out in the, you know, after the course on the first day, all that kind of stuff. And for a lot of people, that's a very enjoyable thing to do. All well and good. But again, this starts to take on the thing where you have a person who's accumulated 100 courses or more, and there's plenty, I've seen plenty of these people on their websites who list all of the stuff. But I don't see any evidence of ability. I don't see any evidence necessarily of integrity, skill set, compassion, all of those things that are required for a coach or therapist to actually work effectively. What they do have is look at me, aren't I important? And here's the photograph with the celebrity trainer. The, the, the mindset, the ethos is wrong. And unfortunately, 
so many trainers are contributing to that as more and more people are competing with each other and for the trainer that group photo is really important because what they like to show is hey here's me giving certificates to people aren't I important but also look how many people we've got and that's another key thing you don't see that many people putting up photos when there's just six of them you will see some um, but the bigger the crowd they can rope in the better all for the image the vanity of it and not for the actual end result of the skill set people have in working with mental health and i think in part this fuels the narcissism is that the correct word i think it is the narcissistic values that a lot of the coaches and therapists seem to display over and above the compassionate caring thing that i think most people with mental health issues emotional health difficulties would rather see as always interested in your comments on this one and if you have any additional things in the weirdness of the alphabet therapy training culture stick it in the comment section